So Ali and I thought it might be useful to talk about postnatal depression from the perspective of the friend whose friend has postnatal depression. So in my case, Ali uh, suffered postnatal depression with her third child. And I think that actually that's quite an important point that it's her third child. And I think having done it twice before and not suffered with PND, the fact that she did third time round was sort of even harder to get your head round because you're like, well, I've done this before, I know what I'm doing. Like, you know, why would I get it now? Uh, but she did. And it took me by surprise as much as it took her by surprise. But it certainly highlighted for me my lack of understanding of it, despite the fact that it's something I know is so common and despite the fact that it's something that, you know, I read about very regularly. Um, you know, threw up all hours. I suspected that Ali had postnatal depression. Um, she wasn't her normal bubbly self. I know she was, you know, she she just wasn't herself. You know, Ali, as you'll know, if you're a up all hours follower, if you've seen any of our stuff or if you've just seen the videos, you know, she's um, she's funny, she's outgoing. She's, um, she's just, a wonderful happy person and certainly very pragmatic and someone that gets things done and you know I mean I, I look at her in awe quite frankly about the way she manages you know her life with the kids with the dog with a husband that works full-time and she just does and there's nothing that Ali can't do so when I could see that she was starting to not be able to do things quite as easily as she used to you know, you you have to sort of gauge yourself like, mm, she could be postnatal. And I did say that a couple of times to her when she was a bit sad or she was a bit down. I'd say like, oh, you know, do you think it's postnatal? And she would always go, no, no, you know, it's no, it's just the way things are at the minute. It'd be fine, it'd be fine. I got a lot of it, it'll be fine, um, which is fine, you know, but you do take note of that and you do sort of think, okay, I wonder if there's something a bit more deep rooted here, but you don't want to keep going on about it. And because she's so pragmatic and she wouldn't necessarily you know, say, you kind of just bumble along and sort of keep an eye on it, which is what I did, you know, I was very aware that I just had to keep an eye on her to make sure that everything was okay. Uh, when she said I've got postnatal depression, it was one, good to hear, because I knew that we knew what it was, but two, it was also really hard to hear, um, because she's this very in control person who doesn't really like, like anyone else to do much else, because she does everything herself. Um, it's a bit of a martyr sometimes, Ali, but fine. Um, to hear her say that, I guess, suddenly made me go, oh, um, it's not a weakness, but it showed a side of her that I hadn't seen before. Um, and it, it made, it, it, you know, it made me worry. It instantly made me go, Jesus, this is serious. If she's admitting this and she's saying this out loud to me, um, this is serious and we need to address it. And in all brutal honesty, I had absolutely no idea how we do that or how we were to do it or what the next stage was with that. Um, so that was where the research started, if you will. You know, that's where the reading started and that's where you start going, okay, so what is the next, what's the path here? You know, how do we make sure that we get this, we address this and we don't ignore it? Um, as the friend that sees the person regularly, you feel quite responsible for what I don't know just you feel quite responsible for just being there and for making sure that you're addressing it but you don't want to talk about it all the time like I really I really struggled like I, I, I know that and she'd say it I asked her I'd say a lot are you happy are you okay you know you get a lot of those questions because we would sit and we would um you know sit and and, and work in her kitchen and, I, and we'd laugh about something and I'd go you know, are you happy? Because I desperately want, wanted her to be happy. So when she was laughing, I take that as a really good sign. And I think, oh my God, she's really happy. And then she'd go, yeah, but I'm dead inside. And I was, I, I, you know, and to, to hear that, I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, there's just nothing here. And I'm like, but you're laughing. And she's like, yeah, no, but that's like a voluntary thing. You know, I find it funny, so I'm laughing. She said, but I'm, but there's nothing here. I'm dead inside. Like, those words, I'm dead inside, you're like, and I couldn't understand how we'd be sitting there laughing and she'd be nursing her child, looking after her baby, but she was dead inside, numb. She used to have numb a lot, dead inside, just no feeling. It's like she didn't have that level of emotion. But I couldn't understand how you could feel like that 
and still operate and still you know be kind and look after your kids and and laugh with me or give me the time of day like if you had no emotion so it was it, it was it it was a really difficult thing to try and understand what she was going through.